Hello, everyone. Welcome to another day of Virtual College Tour Week. We're so excited to have you today. And this program is brought to you by our strong partnership with Buffalo Public Schools, Say Yes Buffalo, and you, our community of parents and students. We're so happy to have you guys here today. With us today is Hilbert College. And starting us off this afternoon will be undergraduate admissions counselor, Lisa. So Lisa, you can take it away. Great, thanks, Shady. Thank you all for taking time out to view our presentation today. Uh, we, I wanna thank our Say Yes partners for allowing us the opportunity to be here. Um, our goal is to give you an overview of Hilbert College, as well as learn about what our campus has to offer. And of course, we will be going over our admissions and financial aid process. Before I begin, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Lisa Leapsight. I am one of the admissions counselors here. Um, I work with the area Buffalo uh, Charter Schools. And then with me today, we have a whole team of Hilbert employees who are gonna be assisting me. Um, first, we're gonna have William Morton, who is also one of the admissions counselors. He'll be talking about the college and about the financial aid um, process. Uh, we're also gonna be hearing from Jill Cole Splosky. She's the Director of Residence Life and Community Standards. Hopefully I got that right, Jill. Uh, she'll be speaking about living on campus as well as our student life. We're also going to be hearing from Megan Valentine. She's our director of athletics, and she'll be talking about our athletic programs. And then finally, we're going to be talking with Debbie Dimitrovsky. She will be talking about our academic services that we offer here on campus. So please feel free to dive in, right in and please ask us any questions you have. There's a chat box um, down below, so feel free to ask us anything. We're, we're all here for you. Okay, so now we are actually going to start off with a little video that we want to show you that's going to showcase our college. Some things seem so obvious in their simplicity until you see things differently. At Hilbert College, we strive to appreciate and understand what it means to be different. At Hilbert College, we embrace freedom of thought. We emphasize a commitment to service. At Hilbert College, we are leaders, we are activists, we are success stories. We endeavor to be a voice for social justice in the world. At Hilbert College, we are problem solvers and clue seekers. We are helpers and entrepreneurs. At Hilbert College, we are analytical and creative. At Hilbert College, the past is different, the community, the feeling, the values are different. You are different. At Hilbert College, not only do we see things differently, but we recognize what is different. See Hilbert College, see different. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that video of our college. We're gonna dive a little bit into um, our history. Um, newcomers usually ask um, where our name originates. So I'd like to always start there. Um, it's a good place to start because it answers um, the question of both our history and our mission. Uh, the college is named after Mother Colette Hilbert, who in 1850, I'm sorry, 1897, established the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph which became the college's founding congregation. And then in 1957, the community founded a teacher training college for its members. In 1969, we brought in our curriculum to include degrees in, outside of teacher training to expand its enrollment and include both men and women. And they officially became a Hilbert College at that point in time. 
Uh, we are located in Hamburg, New York. We're just south of Buffalo. I'm on a 60 acre campus. Uh, it's a beautiful campus. We hope you'll get a chance to come and see us at some point in time when we when we open up again. Um, like I said, hopefully you'll be able to come and, and visit us when, when that happens. Um, the core values, of the, I would like to talk a little bit about our values because it's a very important part of our history and about our college. Our values provide a framework for our community to accomplish the college mission. And you can see here on the slide, the values are listed here as service, respect, compassion, peace, joy, hope, vision, and integrity. And it really is, is something that's very important to us and we really um, live by these values and it's embedded in everything we do here at the college. Um, a little bit about um, the college itself. Our student population is approximately 900 students. So we're definitely on the smaller side, uh, which is great. Um, our student teacher ratio is about 12 to one. So the average class size is about 15 to 20 students. Um, so what that means for you as a student is that you're gonna get um, very individualized, very a very individual, individualized educational experience. Um, you get to know your professors very well and they get to know you very well. The faculty and staff of Hilbert College are very dedicated in providing students a lots of attention and support while you're here, um, allowing you to grow and to explore new challenges. And many of our programs do emphasize hands-on learning. And I think we're gonna see on the next slide. Um, I think we're next slide, William. Thank you. Um, we're gonna show you what our undergraduate programs look like. So you can see here, uh, we have uh, many different options to choose from. Our newest program that is actually lost, launching this fall is our biology program. And that does include uh, information for students who are interested in going into uh, pre-med, pre-vet or pre-pharmacy. We also offer uh, business programs, uh, computer security information insurance, cybersecurity. Some of our very popular programs here at the college are criminal justice and forensic science and we have different concentrations available in those. We have also political science, um, a great digital media and communication program with different um, major and um, minor uh, um, options, as well as English, psychology, human services, and a liberal studies program. And we'll dive into that a little bit more. Um, in addition, we have um, the opportunity for students to earn a bachelor's degree and master's degree in five years. We call them four plus one programs. And we developed these for students to allow them to enroll in graduate courses in their senior year. Um, so you can see um, the options available are for criminal justice with a master's in criminal justice administration, uh, forensic science with a master's in criminal justice, political science with a master's in public administration and human services with a master's in public administration with a health administration um, specification. Um, the, the great um, advantage of this is that students can save time and save money by earning their master's degree in five years. Next slide. Okay, so a little bit about our admissions process. Applying to Hilbert is fast and easy and best of all, it is free. There is no application fee. Um, if you use the Hilbert College application. Um, however, we do also accept the Common App. So if you um, prefer to use the Common App, we do accept that as well. Um, you will be required to submit a high school transcript. Um, you would request that through your high school guidance counselor. Um, I know right now with schools, um, many of them are closed. Um, that may not be an option, but we're willing to work with you. If you can't get your transcript, um, there are other options available. And then, and we can certainly talk to you about that on an individual basis. Um, options that are optional are letters of recommendation, um, SAT scores and ACT scores, as well as a personal essay and a resume. Those are um, all very good options if you'd like to submit those with your application. Um, and we certainly would consider them as part of the application process. Once you've completed your application, uh, your assigned admissions counselor will connect with you personally and guide you and your family through the remainder of the enrollment process. Next slide. Okay, so we have a really great amount of interest from SAS students and from the SAS population. And we're really excited that we're gonna be welcoming students from the following schools that we've listed here. So uh, welcome to the Emerson School of Hospitality students, Frederick Law Olmsted, Health Sciences, Hutch Tech, 
and Institute of Technology at Syracuse, that's our SEA Syracuse partner, Lafayette High School, South Park, and Tapestry. So we're really excited to um, certainly invite all those students to our campus. And we are still uh, right now accepting applications for fall. We still have spots open and we'll get into that in a little bit. I'm actually gonna turn things over right now to William. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, the cost of attendance. Hi, thank you, Lisa. Uh, my name is William Morton. I am one of the undergraduate admissions counselor. Uh, primarily, I work with the Buffalo Public um, Schools, uh, you know, helping students get their application and materials in. Um, one of the important questions that always comes to mind when uh, thinking about going to college is, what's it going to cost? Um, so what we did uh, was we took a couple of sample aid, financial aid packages for our SAS specific students. Um, right here, you'll see this is a SAS commuter aid package. Um, again, um, it's important to know that everyone's financial aid package might vary just ever so slightly. Um, but for the sake of uh, the example, um, I will run through the commuter aid package as well as what it would cost to live on campus. Um, as you uh, can imagine, um, in order to get a financial aid package, it's very important that you submit your FAFSA and your TAP application uh, first and foremost, if you haven't already done so. Um, next, you're going to want to make sure that you submit your say yes application um, with your school to make sure that you're in, um, you know, in the system to be designated as a say yes recipient. Um, once all of that information is in there, um, our financial aid office will work to get you your own personal uh, personal financial aid package to kind of break down the cost of attendance. Um, as you can see here, um, this particular student will be receiving um, federal Pell Grant um, for the maximum award, as well as the tuition assistance program um, grant. Those are both grant monies that are not required to be repaid to the state or federal government, assuming that you maintain um, compliance within your program of study. Um, this student right here has, um, we also received, will be receiving a trustee scholarship, which is one of our merit-based scholarships, um, which every student will be um, receiving depending on what their overall um, high school performance looks like. Um, because the student submitted their FAFSA um, to us, we are giving them a one-time $500 filing grant. In addition uh, to that grant, they will be receiving a first year grant for visiting our college. Um, because of COVID-19 and the surrounding circumstances, it's really hard to come to campus. It's actually not really recommended um, and we are unable to give you a personalized tour. However, um, we do have several other options. You know, you can set up a personal Zoom meeting with your counselor. Uh, we do have some online information sessions that you might be able to attend. Um, and as we kind of move forward through this, um, hopefully soon we'll be able to open up our campus uh, to the to the community so that we can welcome students back in the fall. Um, for say yes specific students, um, for this specific student right here, they'll be receiving the say yes education award, which will kind of cover anything else that uh, the other loan money does or any other other money that doesn't um, that doesn't cover the tuition and fees. Uh, for the sake of direct costs, you can see at the bottom where it says estimated direct costs. Um, it's about twenty four thousand five hundred and thirty dollars, and that includes the fees, the tuition. Um, and um, any any associated fees that are, would require you to uh, enroll in the fall. Um, right here, this student is also packaged with um, some uh, direct subsidized loan money. This loan money is not a requirement for our commuter students. It's packaged in there so that students can have some extra money for um, transportation, books, um, you know, perhaps they might need to buy a laptop or something like that uh, for school or educational related expenses. Um, one last thing about the commuter aid package, I think it's important to realize that, um, you know, the only, um, you know, the yearly out of pocket balance due for this student would be $0, as it would be for, um, you know, eligible say yes students. Uh, what that means is, in this case, even though the student is taking out a loan, they're not having to seek out additional funding outside of the offerings uh, that we're giving here. Um, so the yearly balance due would be $0. If the student doesn't want the direct subsidized loan, then they can simply decline it. Um, they would just have to, you know, be able to support themselves by other means. So the next type of package that you'll see is our um, residential package. Um, so again, um, this student has been packaged with the intent of living on campus. 
Um, it's important to note that students that are interested in living on campus, I mean, you can see that the, the Pell and tuition assistance program, the money is relatively the same. Um, this particular student is receiving our provost scholarship, which is another merit-based scholarship. Um, they are also receiving the filing or the FAFSA filing grant, the visitation grant, um, and then the Say Yes to Education Award. The only difference between this package and the other package is the, um, the Say Yes Hilbert Board Scholarship. Um, in order for you to be able to cover the cost of housing, we are requiring students that want to live on campus to take out uh, the $5,500 in direct I'm sorry, indirect subsidized and unsubsidized loans. And then we would cover the rest in a Say Yes Hilbert Board Scholarship, which is, um, a, it's about a 50-50 split if you look at it. Um, again, um, you know, your loan in takeout would be a little bit higher if you're living, if you're interested in living on campus. But again, at the end of the day, your still estimated yearly balance would be zero dollars. Um, in addition, um, one of the new things that we're working with um, some partners are uh, our transportation needs for some of our students who might not have a vehicle. Um, or last, prior to this coming year, uh, it was very difficult to get to our campus to using the Buffalo public transport system. So um, some of the proposed um, City of Buffalo pickup drop-off locations will be running a service, um, a busing service. Uh, these are the four stops that we will be servicing to. So usually um, if you know, you're somebody who takes advantage of uh, Buffalo Public Transport, um, it's very easy to get to one of these uh, main hubs and then we'll be able to kind of get you uh, to and from our campus, uh, you know, around, uh, throughout specific times during the day. So hopefully that will alleviate some barriers or con uh, concerns with transportation. Uh, next, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Jill. She is our Director of Residence and Community Standards. Um, and she'll be, go over, go, go, be going over um, housing, residence life, and um, everything like that. So Jill, thank you so much. Great. Thank you, William. And as William mentioned, my name is Jill Cole Spolosky. I serve as the Director of Residence Life and Community Standards with Hilbert College. I am thrilled to be talking to you all about the student experience, not only what it means to live on campus, but everything outside of the classroom. Next slide, please. So this is an overarching viewpoint of everything that's involved in student life. So you can see that there's a multitude of resources and opportunities to be engaged and get a holistic educational experience. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on here when we think of the Hilbert experience. Next slide, please. So we're gonna focus in a bit more on residence life. And so we have three different residence halls. Our first residence hall is Trinity Hall that we're gonna be discussing. This is both a double style and suite style room. What that means is that we have two different style housing options for you, all have private bathrooms. Our double style is set up where there is a bedroom, there is a bathroom that adjoins and then another bedroom on the other side. We have suite style living as well, which includes three sets of bedrooms, two bathrooms and a common space. All of those housing arrangements are the same price. So what's important for us here at Hilbert is to make sure that you are in a housing situation that's going to help you thrive as a person and as a student over looking at what is the most cost-effective option for you to live in. Once we talk about our upperclassmen residence halls, we're gonna show you a quick virtual tour of Trinity Hall since this is where our new students are placed. If you continue to, oh, can you just stay back for one second? Thank you. <laughs> so we have our upperclassmen housing as well. So as you progress through your collegiate experience with Hilbert, we have two different residence halls. Our sophomore residence hall and for transfers is St. Joseph's Hall. It's our original residence hall on campus. And this has the wellness center and our counseling center in this facility as well. Both Trinity Hall and St. Joseph's Hall includes our unlimited meal plan, which we'll talk about a little bit later in our conversation today, uh, but we have really great dining, so it's good to know that you'll be well fed while living with us. Our juniors and seniors have the ability to live in our campus apartments, and so this is independent housing that provides you a single room, a kitchen, living room, and it is fully furnished. Next slide, please. So we're gonna take a minute to watch our Residence Life video. Uh, this will show you Trinity Hall. Um, it is just background music. So if you uh, need subtitles, you don't have to worry about it for this presentation.
you. Um, so as you can see with that video, uh, we have new residence halls as well. And there's a lot of great features that come with our residence halls. They're listed here on the slides, but we're going to break them down piece by piece. So first and foremost, we have inclusive laundry. So there is no additional fee that comes with laundry. We do provide washers and dryers on every wing of our residence halls. So there is lots of opportunities to wash your clothing and do so at no cost. We also include cable and internet. When you do live on campus, we have high speed internet to help you stream um, and do the Netflix and all that fun stuff that um, you need to help de-stress after a long day of classes. Uh, we do also offer a comprehensive cable package, which includes multiple sports packages as well, which is very important to our Hilbert students. Uh, we also provide sanitation with a strong cleaning staff in all of our communal spaces as well. We take out the garbage on a daily basis, make sure our lobbies are clean, and especially with COVID-19, we are increasing the sanitation within our communities as well. We do provide air conditioning in Trinity in our campus apartments as well. We have game rooms in both Trinity Hall and St. Joseph's Hall. Our game rooms range from, we have a pinball machine in one of our game rooms, pool tables, uh, ping pong, foos table. So there's once again, great ways to stay within your community to engage with others. We have computer labs available in both Trinity and St. Joseph's Hall as well. Those computer labs also come with unlimited printing as well. So if you do come to Hilbert, it's good to know if you do not have the means or access to have a laptop, we do have reliable computers. And you don't need to worry about bringing a printer to campus as well because they're here in our residence halls. We also have a resident assistance and most people call them RAs and they are a fantastic resource to utilize throughout your collegiate experience as well. All of our resident assistants go through extensive training to support you at that, that student and that core of who you are. They're all upperclassmen as well, so they've gone through the Hilbert experience before. We have live-in professional staff members as well. So beyond our student staff, we also have professional staff that live and work in the residence halls with you to support you and your learning. And lastly, we take security very seriously here on campus. We have a fantastic partnership with Campus Safety and we do whatever we can to make sure that your experience here is a safe one. And so as we're talking about all these features, there's some other components to the experience beyond those tangible items that are the memory makers. And those are our programs. So William, you just hit the space bar. Thank you. So here is a selection of some programs and activities that Residence Life specifically hosted for our students within the past year. Our first shows a hot cocoa delivery. In Buffalo, as I'm sure many of you have experienced, we get snow. And so during one of our snow days, our resident assistants worked with our campus dining and delivered hot cocoa to all of our residents to make sure that they stayed warm. We do things like this to make sure that you have those personable moments and those memories. We also have a very strong criminal justice and forensic science program. So collaborating with our academics, we brought a canine unit in and they did a demonstration with our students on how they search for drugs, how they train canines, different professional opportunities that are available to students, but providing some really great education as well. And then we all got to play with the dog as well, which is always a perk. We also do game, uh, different paint nights as well. Uh, so we recently did a paint night right before uh, COVID-19 happened where we all did paintings of Forky. And one of our students who is very passionate about art led that paint night for our students as well. So it's a great way to show your artistic skills, but if you also wanna get engaged and do something that's unique and fun, you can find different platforms on campus to be able to do so. And lastly, one of our really fun programs we did on campus this past year, our students love laser tag. And so we turned the ground floor of our residence hall into area 51, and you could come and fight off the aliens and laser tag. So we try to make sure that we get a wide range of programs and activities, some that are fun, some that challenge your thought, and some that just make you feel good. That's really important to us with the living experience. Next slide. So as we talk about the fun, we also have to talk about making sure that you eat and you get your body fueled. And so we have two different ways of eating and dining when you come on campus. First is our dining room, which is your traditional idea of college dining. As I mentioned in our previous conversations when we were talking about Trinity and St. Joe's, we have an unlimited all-you-can-eat meal plan for these students. 
What this means is all you have to do is bring your student ID to the dining room, you can swipe, and then you can eat as much as you'd like, whenever you'd like. We have very healthy options available, including our salad bar, and you can work with our campus dining staff to make sure that there's dietary needs available for you. But you can also do something where you just walked out of that test and you nailed it and you wanna go get yourself a plate of French fries, go get yourself that plate of french fries it's right before a really great show i know i love watching Grey's anatomy you want a cup of ice cream before you do that you can go to the dining hall and get yourself that cup of ice cream so what's great is that we provide inclusive needs and if you do have any specific dietary needs you can work with debbie dimitrovsky who's going to wrap up our presentation today to make sure that your dietary needs are met we also on campus got a brand new coffee shop it just opened this fall and it's a huge hit for our students and it's called 78 West. It's located in one of our academic buildings and provides you an array of different dining options. One of our classics is the Hawk Mocha and it's a part caramel, part chocolate with espresso frozen drink. Our students absolutely love it. And so all of our students who live on campus get Hawk Bucks to be able to eat at 78 West, but if you are a commuter, you can go through our campus dining website and add Hawk Bucks to your account as well to make sure that you have a commuter friendly place to grab food while you're here on campus. It's also a really fun place for students to hang out, engage in culture. We've done some spoken word at uh, the 78 West as well. So there's a lot of opportunities to engage within our campus dining as well. Next slide, please. Lastly, when we think about student life, as I mentioned, we have a multitude of resources, but there's a few that we wanted to highlight for you all. First is our counseling center with Dr. Chris Suda. Dr. Chris Suda has a range of professional experiences. He's worked with professional sports teams as a sports psychologist, including for the Buffalo Bandits, which is our professional lacrosse team, to working in a multitude of different colleges and universities, treating students. He works very closely with our athletics program as well in sports psychology. So he has a very wide range of ways to engage with you. He also hosts a lot of programs and activities about health and wellness within his purview as well to make sure that we're thinking about you, not just as a student, but really getting to the core of you as a person. We have our campus safety office as well. This photo is of Vito Chez, our director of campus safety with our campus patrol car. So we have campus safety constantly monitoring campus to make sure that you are safe on campus. And we also do educational programs and initiatives to make sure that we are really getting to the core of students when it comes to keeping you safe on campus. If you are ever in need of support, you could also text or call our campus safety phone number and they'll respond immediately. Our staff is on 24-7, 365 days a week, and they go through a multitude of training from ways to keep you safe to cultural competency to understanding our school and our culture. And so they're a really great campus partner here at Hilbert. We also have fantastic ways of getting involved on campus. This photo is from an advocacy walk that we held on campus in the beginning of November. But we have a multitude of different programs. It really depends on what you want to see. And so if there is an activity that you want to make happen, you can create, create a club or you can become a part of a club or an organization to make that become reality. We really empower our students to drive their engagement on campus. And so that's something that's really fantastic about being at a small school. If you wanna see it happen, we're gonna do what we can to make it happen for you. And lastly, service learning. Lisa, in the beginning of our conversation, talked about our Franciscan identity, and service is a huge core of that. We do day of service on our campus. We actively engage in service within our community. It is rooted in our curriculum, and it really is the core of who we are when it comes to our campus identity. So if you want to give back to your community, Hilbert provides you multiple opportunities to do so. And so that talks about our student experience and student life, but there's another layer that comes to talking about our experience with students and that is with student athletes. And so I'm gonna yield our conversation over to Megan Valentine, who's our director of intercollegiate athletics, who's gonna to talk to you in more depth about the athletic experience for our students. 
Thank you, Jill. Um, as, as Jill mentioned, uh, my name is Megan Valentine. I serve as Director of Athletics here at, at Hobart College, and I do not have any uh, slides to, to show with you right now, but what I will direct you um, to do if you are at your computer right now, um, if you go to www.hilberthawks.com, um, that is our athletics website, and uh, Please feel free to, to you know, navigate that site. Um, there's a, a lot of information that's available there um, showing the teams that, that we offer, the opportunities uh, for sports participation um, that are available there. Um, and also, if you go under the Inside Athletics tab um, and go under our staff directory, if there's a particular sport that you really have an interest in, um, please feel free. There's contact information there for those individuals. Um, please do feel free to reach out to, to those folks and, and certainly they can um, help answer any questions that you might have um, and, and what that might look like um, if you're interested in becoming a, a student athlete at, at Hobart College. Um, just a quick overview of our athletics program. We are an NCAA um, Division III program, which means that uh, while we are not permitted uh, to provide any sort of athletics-related um, financial aid, um, as my colleagues have shared earlier, we have multiple other um, ways to, to provide aid um, to our students. Um, we compete in the Allegheny Mountain Collegiate Conference, and our, our, our women's and men's um, lacrosse programs also compete in the Northeastern Athletic Conference. Um, a majority of these schools um, are within uh, New York State and also Pennsylvania. So what does this mean for you? It means that, you know, by being a student athlete at Hilbert College, um, you know, you have the opportunity to not only excel um, on the playing field, on the court, um, but it's not going to take up so much time that you're not going to be able to focus on your academic studies or you're not going to be able to participate in a way that you want through um, other extracurriculars. Um, we really pride ourselves, as my colleagues have shared earlier too, um, community service is really important to us and all of our um, athletics teams are involved with community service to some extent um, during their, the course of the time that, uh, that they are involved with the, the Hawks athletics program. Um, we currently offer 14 sports, and we're really, really excited to be bringing back our men's volleyball program um, this upcoming year. It had a, a few-year break, um, but we're, we're certainly excited to uh, be able to offer um, that program for our community um, again as we move into this next year. Um, the sports that we offer in the fall include men's and women's cross country, uh, mixed golf, and that opportunity is, is open to uh, male students and female students, and men's and women's soccer and women's volleyball. Um, in the wintertime, we offer uh, women's bowling and men's and women's basketball. And then in our spring season, we offer men's and women's lacrosse, uh, women's softball, men's baseball and men's volleyball will take place um, over the course of both the, the winter and the spring semester. Um, close to 50% of our student athletes do live on campus. Jill shared what those um, facilities look like and, and you know, not only um, are those you know, fantastic facilities for our students to be um, living in, it's helpful for our student athletes because sometimes we are getting back a little bit later. Sometimes we do have um, you know, earlier morning training, and, and it, it certainly is, is helpful for our student athletes to also embed themselves more into the, the fabric of, of what the Hilbert community experience um, is, is like. Um, but our student athletes, not only are they um, able to participate in, in athletics, um, but a number of our student athletes are, are residential advisors, um, they're leaders of other uh, groups on, on campus as well. Um, we pride ourselves in the academic excellence of our student athletes. Um, this past spring semester, we just hit our 18th consecutive semester of reaching at least a, a 3.0 GPA. Um, I have a, have a deal with, with my athletes for every 4.0 that they reach. Um, I owe them a mile. Um, so this past semester, uh, our athletes hit uh, 20 uh, 4.0s. So if anybody out there wants to wants to take a jog, wants to take a run, wants to take a walk, come on with me, and and you know I I, I welcome anybody who wants to join. Um, you know, also uh, from an academic standpoint, 
um, you know, one uh, thing that we really pride ourselves on is each one of our athletics programs um, has a, a faculty mentor and our faculty mentors are really, really involved with, with each of our teams, you know, say for, for some reason, if you're really, really struggling um, in, in a class, you know, not only can you come to your coach, um, can you come to me as, as an administrator, um, but you have that additional layer, that additional opportunity to talk to your, your team faculty mentor, um, you know, what the Hilbert experience um, and what that Hilbert athletics experience is, um, is we want to help you succeed. We want to help you reach that level of excellence. And, and we know that in, in making the commitment to Hilbert, um, you know, we're going to, to make sure that we can do anything and everything that, that we can do to, to help you and ensure that you're having the most positive, positive uh, experience possible um, in the classroom, in the community, and in, in your athletics pursuits, um, you know, while, while you're here. Um, we offer an athletics academic monitoring program here. And again, it's just an additional layer of assistance that, that we offer to our student athletes. You know, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you're graduating and we want to make sure that you have that additional uh, layer of support. We want to make sure that you can play. Um, so, and, and we have certain standards to ensure that you're maintaining your, your NCAA athletics eligibility. And, and um, you know, I would argue that there's a reason why our student athletes have higher um, academic scores than the, the rest of the student population. And it's because we have so many built-in layers. Um, you know, we, we are people who pride ourselves on, on success and we will make sure that we do anything and everything that we can do to make sure that you succeed when you become a Hilbert College Hawk. Um, currently, some exciting things that we're working on from a facilities perspective. Um, if you have been in the region or have, have uh, you know, seen any, anything that's been happening in, in our community, um, you know, we're working right now on, on uh, building brand new softball and baseball fields, which we're really, really excited to be able to provide those opportunities um, to those athletes. And certainly those facilities will be available for the general you know, recreational student user um, as well, whether that's through club sports, intramurals, um, you know, athletics works with student activities to make sure that we have those um, you know, options for, for all of our students um, on, on campus. And we're also starting some, some very entry level conversations um, about uh, building a, a turf and, and track and field complex as well. And, and certainly while I wish that that was you know, ready tomorrow, um, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit patient um, with that process too. So while we won't have it tomorrow, um, you know, certainly it's, it's something that we are envisioning for our future and, and are excited about being able to uh, potentially provide that, um, you know, a couple years down the road. Um, again, you know, it, when I started, um, we went through um, the the athletics website and and shared with folks um, how to contact a coach if you have an interest in in potentially participating in in a team. Um, please do not hesitate to to reach out to any of those individuals. Um, you know, I really am providing a very, very brief overview, overview but I am I'm very confident that, that there are some, um, you know, some, some layered questions that, that folks might have and some more specific questions that, that people might have. So by all means, please feel free to, to reach out to any of us. Um, you know, we're, we're here to help you. And, and when campus is, is back open again, um, we're following you know, regional and state mandates right now, but certainly when, when campus is back open, we really want, we want to see you here. Um, you know, we're happy to schedule a visit um, for you and, you know, provide you that opportunity to uh, meet your, your potential future teammates. So again, uh, please feel free to reach out if there's anything that we can help you with. And, and we look forward to um, hopefully seeing you on campus soon and go Hawks. Uh, next, let me introduce our uh, next presenter, uh, Debbie Dimitrovsky who serves as the director of the Hilbert College um, Academic Services Center and Accessibility Services. Thank you, Megan. Let me talk a little bit about academic services. Now that we've talked about all the fun stuff outside of the classroom, there's a lot of fun stuff that happens within the classroom as well. So what I like to first highlight is the purpose of, one of the purposes of my office is to help students with the transition and moving from high school into college. 
the learning environment is going to be vastly different from what you see in a high school setting. Here at Hilbert, we do have very small class sizes. So most of you as freshmen are going to be walking into a foundation seminar class that is required of all of our freshman students that has a linked course that has approximately 12 to 15 students in it. It allows students the ability to work um, with each other to really build relationships and get to know your faculty members very well. Those faculty members for those foundation seminar classes become your student advisor. Um, they also teach you in that class how to become a much more independent learner. And my role as well is to help you to learn some of those independent study skills, independent strategies that you're going to be building within Hilbert. Looking at the schedule at uh, a college versus a high school, you're used to sitting in the classroom about seven and a half hours every single day, Monday through Friday. What happens when you come to college is each course meets for three hours per week. Sometimes that's divided up amongst two days a week and sometimes three days a week. So you're not going to have contact with those faculty members every day. However, you will see them for three hours a week. So if you're doing the math in your head, that's five classes for a full-time student, typically speaking, and that's three hours a class. So you are in class for 15 hours in the classroom setting versus being in your high school seven and a half hours a day, five days a week. So what that leads to is time management. Um, some things that my office do is we work with students in time management issues and helping to construct an academic schedule outside of the classroom. So you can build in all those great skills with um, reading, taking notes, and learning some of the material on your own because it is a much more independent setting. So you are still ex expected to be doing many hours of work outside of the classroom, academically speaking. The instructor role changes vastly from high school to, to college. The instructors serve more as a guide. You're going to be doing a lot more of academic work outside of the class, bringing your, those skills and that knowledge into the classroom. So they are there and they are experts in their field. At Hilbert, we have many, many faculty members who are retired from the fields that they're teaching in. We have many that are, um, that are very, very equipped. Uh, criminal, our criminal justice system, our forensics, uh, our forensic science program, many of the faculty that teach in those programs have worked in uh, law enforcement. They have also worked within the Erie County Medical Examiner's Office. So you do get to meet, and because of our small class size, like I mentioned before, you will get to meet with those professors and really build a rapport with those faculty members. All faculty members are required to have office hours, so you can go in and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So that's something a little bit different. You're not going to have your conversations within the classroom with your faculty members, but through their office hours. And then the next few, um, few bullets there with reading, materials, testing, and resources and support. With reading, there are often in, the, often in the high school classroom, in the high school environment, you are given your readings within the classroom. You're doing it together within the classroom. In college, you're really expected to do those readings and complete those projects and assignments outside of the classroom, bring that knowledge in. So the instructor can really build on top of the knowledge that you've already got. Um, materials, let's talk organization. I know that with some classes in high schools, they do tell you exactly what materials you need. One of the questions I often get from students is what do I need for my classes? Do I need binders? Do I need folders? And my answer is always do what works for you. If you like color coding binders, notebooks, if you like using one huge, large three ring binder and using tabs and putting all of your courses in one binder, you need to use the materials that work best for you. And I'm there to help you along the way to figure out what that learning style may be that you have and how you're going to learn best. So help you to identify that right from the beginning. Testing is gonna be a little bit different in the college environment as well. They're gonna be a little less frequent. And the test taking strategies um, it's important that you learn how to take different types of tests. Are you taking tests that require multiple choice responses or essay responses? Very different way in how you study for those types of tests. And that brings me to the resources and support. You've already heard from several of my colleagues about all of the, the resources we have on campus and the support that you have within our campus as well. So if we look at the next slide, I'm just going to highlight some important um, resources that we have for you in the Academic Services Center. We're located within the Learning Commons in the library building. In the Academic Service Center, you're gonna have access to free tutoring. Now that is free tutoring in all courses at Hilbert. Yes, all courses at Hilbert have tutors associated with them. We have some peer tutors. We also have professional tutors. Some of the professional tutors are graduate students. 
Some of our professional tutors are um, English faculty members. We also have some math faculty members and accounting that work with students in those fields. We have an academic skills coach as well. And she really works with most of our freshman students and helping them um, a little bit more strategically with the way in which they're transitioning into college and helping to build those skills. Which leads us to the academic skill building, looking at note taking. Many of our faculty members are not gonna be handing out um, notes for class and things like that. So it really is up to you to be taking notes during class. It's also gonna be up to you to be um, taking notes from the readings and the assignments that are given to you outside of class and bringing those with you into the classroom to build upon. Helping you to manage your time we talked about already with all those hours outside of the classroom. How do you manage that time in conjunction with any other family obligations you may have, any other outside part-time jobs, athletics, any of that. We really work with you to, to set a structure for yourself so that you can be as, a, as a, academically successful as possible. Study skills, looking at different ways to study, and the test-taking strategies as I highlighted before. We also have a writing coordinator on campus. The writing coordinator is accessible both um, in her office as at certain designated times. She's available by appointment, but she's also available online. We like to meet students where they're at, and we find a lot of students, especially right now, are online. So what you can do on the writing coordinator's resource page, she has a place there where you can actually drop off a paper where she'll review it and get back to you within 24 hours, schedule a 10 to 15 minute appointment with you to help to go over that paper with you. Um, so she is an absolutely wonderful resource that we have on campus. We also have a student computer lab. We actually have several student computer labs within the library in the Learning Commons area with several workstations. We have printers set up where you have unlimited printing. And we also have a smart board where we do host academic workshops. Some of our academic workshops include learning your, figuring out what your learning style may be, test taking strategies, learning what a syllabus is and how to use it, as well as learning some of our learning management systems, which I like to liken that to Google Classroom, which most high school students are familiar with. We have our own type of Google Classroom, but it does a whole lot more than what Google Classroom is able to do. Um, we have something called Blackboard. We have another system called self-service. So I'll help provide support as well in those areas to help students learn. And so we hold workshops for students to learn how to use all those systems. We also have several different um, assistive technologies that are available to all students. So once you are a student at Hilbert College with your hilbert.edu email address, you can go to our website and our presence within Academic Services Center, and you can download some of the free assistive technologies we have, such as Read and Write Gold. You also have access to Microsoft Office 365, which provides Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and some of our other Office programs. Peer mentors are something else that I would like to, con to talk to you about, if we can back up. Thanks, William. So peer mentors are students. They're typically juniors and seniors in the upper level division. We do also have a graduate student. They can serve as peer mentors to help guide you as well. If you just want somebody to help you figure out how to make things work, or you want to talk to another student about what worked for them in a program, I try to match you up with a student that is um, in a similar major as what you're coming into as Hilbert with, so that they can help guide you through the process as well. Sometimes just having that student next to you helping guide you through the way helps for sure. Those are all the services in the Academic Services Center and more, um, but I'm going to pass it back now over to our admissions team with Lisa and William. Great, thank you so much, Debbie, for that information. Thanks to everybody for presenting all that great information. Um, on this slide, you're gonna see um, our contact information. So um, please feel free to reach out to any of us with any questions that you might have. Um, do, you, do you have any questions currently that we can answer for you right now live? Yes, we do have a couple of questions. Um, uh, one to touch on is William touched on transportation and how, um, you guys have numerous routes um, to get to campus from the busing system. Now, do those buses drop off at the same location on campus or throughout campus in different areas or as close as possible to campus? William, do you wanna answer that? 
Debbie for the information. Thanks to everybody for presenting all that great information. Um, um, you guys have numerous routes um, to get to campus from. Hi. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I was hearing some feedback, but yeah. Um, so right now, how it's looking is, um, right now we do we are on the bus line, the Buffalo Public Bus Line. So what will happen is the uh, the shuttle will actually be dropping students off pretty much like right on campus. Um, I know there are plans going forward to have a shuttle that will kind of go through to local shopping if your students students are living on campus. Um, right now we're just trying to get our um, bus route up for the city of uh, Buffalo so that we can get students to and from or our community students to and from from the city um so uh i think that this is a really great first step in um, increasing access to transportation um, and like i said i do see plans in, in the future that will have you know localized shuttles that'll be kind of around the college area and to the local shopping centers as well as like weekend trips to and from um you know different attractions around buffalo awesome that's so cool that you guys will be able to offer that and also one of the other things is you guys talked about expanding your campus and having the new fields being built and you talked about your dormitories that you have how big is your campus for those who haven't been out your way like about how many buildings like how large of a campus is it Sure. So there's um, there's several academic, or I'm sorry, there's two academic buildings. Um, there's also several residence halls, um, four apartment buildings, two um, dormitory style uh, residence halls. Uh, there is an administrative building. There is a campus center, which which currently houses our campus safety as well as our dining services. Um, we do have a, a facilities building right now, uh, in addition to our um, uh, athletics building. Um, so right now, the uh, the two new fields, the two new baseball and softball fields, um, you know, those are currently being uh, constructed as we speak. Um, as far as size of the campus is, um, you know, it's about 60 acres, like Lisa said earlier. Um, what's nice though is uh, everything's it's it's a big campus, but it's it's really small. And what I mean by that is it's very connected. Um, you know, students that live on campus uh, typically won't spend more than a few minutes outside in a blizzard to get to their classes. Um, so it, I think the campus was kind of constructed with that in mind. Um, our two academic buildings, which students will probably be spending most of their time in outside of maybe the library or you know the residence hall or even possibly you know the student union. Um, those those two buildings are connected. And, um, you know, so, so uh, it's, it's a really, really, really small, but big campus. There's lots of room for expansion going in the future if, if, if there is need, if there is need to do that. I know there's been talk, you know, several, you know, not anytime soon, I don't think, uh, but I know they've been talking about a sports complex down the road. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of talk about um, how can we improve campus and how can we keep it uh, up to date with, with, with the current needs of our students. Excellent. And then um, we talked about applying and, and how that process works. Just in case, you know, I know a lot of students are in a situation right now where they may not know where they want to go and are kind of waiting also possibly on um, another decision as far as another campus and don't know if they want to stay local or if they want to still go away. Um, especially due to, you know, situations at hand with COVID. Um, what is the latest that somebody can apply for the fall? And what is, you know, the cutoff for spring as well? Sure. Um, so we're rolling admissions. Um, and what that means is we'll continue to accept students. Um, you know, people, students can continue to apply and we'll continue to accept students until either the, the major itself is full or even really up until um, the start of classes. Um, one of the things that we're very uh, conscious about is, you know, not overfilling classes. So what will happen is um, we want to make sure that we'll have enough, uh, uh, we'll have enough sections to for, for certain courses. Um, you know, students, uh, you know, it's not, I, I, I always talk, you know, when I'm meeting one-on-one -on -one with students, you know, it's not really fair to ask a 17-year-old kid what you'd like to do with the rest of your life uh, when they're used to raising their hand to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, you know, we really want to uh, make it as, uh, as, as, as an easy as a process to get started with us and, and to really transition into that college environment. Um, you know, we, we won't be able to t accept any students much past the first week of classes starting only because we would feel that you would be too far behind to really kind of catch up and it really wouldn't be fair to put you in a situation like that. As far as spring classes go, um, you know, um, it's really, it's right now, everything's kind of on a tentative schedule with COVID-19. Um, so really it's gonna kind of depend on um, when we actually have a start date and 
uh, for classes to get going. Again, similar situ similar situation with um, fall though. Uh, rolling admissions, you know, we want to make sure that you know you have enough time to make that decision on where you want to go. I would I would just like to add in as well um, for those students who are deciding if Hilbert is the right choice for them. Uh, our housing is filling up. So if living on campus is an experience you want, please make sure you connect with our admissions team sooner rather than later to make sure you don't miss out on that experience. Awesome, thank you, Joe, for that extra edit because that is important for them to know. Um, so I would just like to thank the team so much for all of your guys' great work today. And you gave so much information. It was just so excellent to see everything that Hilbert has to offer. Um, the other thing I would like to add um, to anyone who's watching is that please make sure to check out in the chat box. We did put the link for Hilbert Hawks. Um, dot com down in the chat. So make sure you guys check that out if you need further information for that. And thank you so much for attending today's virtual tour. We have another virtual tour at 3.30 Angry University. So we will see you soon. And as always, we are here for you and open for everyone. Bye guys.